Hi everyone, this is Teacher Jules once again and welcome to another lecture video in the mathematics in the modern world. For today's lecture video, we're going to talk about the measures of dispersion or the measures of variability. And before we start with our lecture proper, let us consider the situation. In a hospital where the pulse rate of each patient is taken three times a day, that a patient A is 72, 76, and 74 beats per minute, while that of patient B is 72, 91, and 59 beats per minute. The mean pulse rate of both patient is the same, which is 74 beats per minute. Does that mean they are both stable? No, because we need to observe their difference in variability. Notice that the pulse rate of patient B fluctuates widely, whereas patient A's pulse rate is stable. In addition to central tendency, which is the mean, median, and mode, every data set can be characterized by its variation. Measure of variation is a measure that describes how spread out or scattered a set of data. It is also known as the measure of dispersion or a measure of spread. Some common measures of variability are the range, variance, and the standard deviation. One simple measure of variability is the range. The range is defined to be the highest value minus the lowest value. The symbol R is used for the range. So we have the range is equal to the highest value minus the lowest value. Let us have this example. The data below shows the calories per serving of seven breakfast cereals. Compute the range of the number of calories. So in this data set, we need first to identify the highest value and the lowest value. In this case, the highest value is 190 and the lowest value is 70. Now to take the range, to find the range, we need to subtract the highest and minus the lowest value. So we have 190 minus 70 and that is equal to 120. Therefore, our range is 120. The range measures the total spread in the set of data. However, it does not take into account how the data are distributed between the smallest and the largest value. In other words, the range does not indicate whether the values are evenly distributed throughout the data set. Thus, Using the range as a measure of variation where at least one value is an extreme value is misleading. And that is why we have the variance. Variance is a measure of variability that utilizes all the data. The formula used in solving for the population variance is sigma squared is equal to the summation of x minus mu quantity squared all over n, where the Greek letter mu is the mean of the population and the capital letter n is the population size. And remember that the sigma squared here is just a symbol, so no need for you to square your answer upon using this equation. Let us have this example. A data set contains the following seven values. Find the population variance. Now, in solving for the population variance, first thing we need to do is to find the mean. And the mean is the summation of all the data set divided by the number or divided by the size of the population. So, we have here now 6 plus 2 plus 4 plus 9 plus 1 plus 3 plus 5 is equal to 30 divided by 7. So, our mean is equal to 4.29. 
Now, after having the mean, what we're going to do is just to subtract it to each of the data set or the data value. So, we have here, where did we get 1.71? That is by subtracting 6 minus 4.29. And we have 2 minus 4.29. That is negative 2.29. 4 minus 4.29, that is negative 29, and so on. And for us to get the next column, which is the x minus mu squared, what we're going to do is just to square each of the given values that we have from the second column. So we have 1.71 squared, that is 2.92. And what did you get 5.24? squaring 2.29 so we have that 2 point or negative 2.29 squared is 5.24 negative 0 0.29 squared is 0 0.08 and do that one for the rest of the given data and after solving or completing the said column what we're going to do is to get the summation of all the seven data so we are going to use the summation of x minus mu squared and that is 43.43 and after solving for the summation of x minus mu quantity squared we are going to divide it now by n to get the sigma squared and as we all know we have here 43.43 divided by n wherein n is equal to 7 because there are 7 in the data set so 43.43 divided by 7 is equal to 6.2 therefore sigma squared or the variance of the data set is equal to 6.2 and the next measure of variability is the standard deviation. And the standard deviation is just the square root of the variance. Now, as what you can see, given there the equations or the formulas, you can really identify or you can see there that it is just the square root of the variation. So if you want to get the population standard deviation, just get the square root of the variance. Now, let us have this example. The marks of a class of 8 students are the following 8 values. Now, the same with the variance. All we need to do is to get first the mean of the given data set. So, we have there the summation of all the values divided by 8. And that is equal to 40 over 8. And 40 divided by 8 is equal to 5. Therefore, our mean there is 5. And after solving the mean, what we're going to do is just to subtract it to the given value. So we have here now 2 minus the mean, that is equal to 3. 4 minus 5 is equal to negative 1. 4 minus 5 is equal to negative 1. And do that one for the rest of the given values. So we have here now there, completing now the table or the second column. Next is to square each of the given or taken values so negative 3 squared is equal to 9 negative 1 is equal to 1 and we have the same values and 0 squared that is equal to 0 2 squared is equal to 4 and 4 squared is equal to 16 and after getting the or completing the third column what we're going to do is to get the summation of x minus mu quantity squared so we have 9 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 0 plus 0 plus 4 plus 16 that is equal to 32 and now we are now ready to solve for the standard deviation by using the formula s is equal to the square root of the summation of x minus mu quantity squared all over n now what we're going to do is to substitute all the given data so we have here now s is equal to the square root of 32 over the n is 8 and 32 over 8 is equal to the square root of 4 and square root of 4 is equal to 2 therefore 
the standard deviation of the given data set is equal to 2. What are the uses of variance and standard deviation? If the variance or standard deviation is large, the data are more dispersed. This information is useful in comparing two or more data sets to determine which is more or most variable. This is also to test the variable's consistency. This is also used to determine the number of data values that fall within the specified interval in a distribution. And the variance and standard deviation are used quite often in inferential statistics.